It should come as no surprise, but you don't want to get on the wrong side of Russia. Today we delve deep into the shadows to uncover the bone-chilling truth behind its formidable reputation. From their mysterious secret agents lurking in the shadows to the unforgiving landscapes that swallow the unwary, the Russian bear guards its secrets fiercely. Brace yourself for a heart-pounding adventure as we unravel terrifying tales that will make Russia a force to be reckoned with. These are 20 reasons you shouldn't mess with Russia. Number 20. The Tu-22 and Tu-160 Bombers Now I'm going to talk about two bombers in one entry because they are two variations of the same kind of craft. Bombers in the military are meant to do one job and do it very well, to bomb the bejesus out of anything and everything that's below them. These planes are vital for massive strikes against the enemy, regardless of whether they're on the land or at sea. But their biggest problem is range. They take up so much fuel that they actually have a short leash, but both the US and Russia have long-range bombers that can take to the skies and stay there for quite a long time. And in modern times, that would be the Tu-22 and the Tu-160. These planes were effective during the Cold War and helped to keep the naval ships of the United States at bay because they could reach them and bomb them if needed. In regards to the Tu-160, it has the distinction of being the largest and heaviest combat aircraft in the world, but it makes up for its bulk by being able to use bombs and missiles quite effectively at long range. Now, on the plus side, Russia doesn't have too many at present. They have about 150 of the Tu-22s and only about 15 of the 160s. However, that still means that they have over 160 of these long range bombers and that's more than enough to cover large swaths of their ocean's borders to ensure that they never get caught off guard by oncoming ships and then blowing them up to get them to back off. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19 the S-400, S-300 missile system. As military technology evolved, you didn't have to worry about having enough missiles on your planes to do certain missions. Instead, you could have weapon systems on the ground that would fire missiles and take out planes that were flying above. These surface-to-air missile systems are now a part of every major power in the world, and if you can have the best systems, you're going to be in business and your enemies will hesitate to fight you. That's where the S-400, S-300 missile systems come into play. Both both of which can be found in Russia right now, and that makes many nations scared. In fact, the United States have put sanctions against those that have the system in place, and if the United States is not happy with someone having this, well, you know it has to be powerful. And that is exactly the case. These surface-to-air missile systems are incredibly good at what they do. They can use a variety of systems to track an enemy craft and ensure that the missiles reach their target. The S-300 system has been in possession of Russia for a long time and has advanced over the years to take on more roles. However, with the advanced S-400 series, it can do even more than that model, which includes loading up a single unit with different kinds of missiles instead of only one. That way, if you need to fire a specific missile to take out a target, it can be done. What's more, it's also a system that is road mobile and has an incredible amount of range regarding how far that you can fire the missiles at targets. So if Russia has a large arsenal of these weapon systems, that just means that they'll be prepared for any aerial assault on their nation, and that makes them even harder to hit should a war come to their doorstep. Number 18. The Su-30 Jet Family We'll now discuss the modern aircraft that Russia has because they do have multiple styles that they've used over the years to help defend their nation against many threats, which also includes the United States. As already mentioned, the Russian MiGs are one of the more famous jets in their roster, as those were at one time one of the toughest aerial aircraft to defeat due to their speed and maneuverability. But there was also the Su family that began with the Su-27 back in the 1970s, and at one point, 
point, the Su-27 was actually better than any of the MiGs that they had built. The Su-27 flanker would fly around receiving updated information from ground-based airborne radars, and that allowed them to keep their radars off until they could see a target in range. Eventually, as times would change, the Su-30 jet family would be born, and they were given different purposes depending on the needs of Russia and the sanctions that were occasionally placed upon the country. For example, one of the Su-30 jets was meant to be a command plane, while another was meant to be a carrier jet. Others were meant to remain in fighting shape, but the MiGs would surpass them eventually. Regardless of their function, they are a key part of what Russia can use in the sky. And should a war come to Russia versus Russia going in and invading another nation, well, you can bet that they'll use every plane that they have to get information, drop off key supplies, bomb their enemies, and take on enemy fighter planes. So regardless of their designation or age, they'll be put into service. And given the track record that Russia has with their aircraft, you can expect many intense dogfights should battles ever happen in their airspace. Number 17. Kirov Class Battlecruiser Long before the skies would become full of planes, and even long after the airways above nations became a battlefield, many would rely on the power of their navies to ensure their dominance or bolster their defense against invading foes. When the Cold War began, and then Soviet Union had some of the biggest ships around via their Kirov-class battlecruiser fleet, the only ships out there that were bigger than these would be aircraft carriers and certain other vessels. What's more, despite these being made in the Cold War, Russia still still has plans for them even decades later. One of the big reasons for this is that these battlecruisers are nuclear-powered vessels, which explains why they've been able to last so long. One ship in particular, with 700 sailors, has been at sea for years conducting numerous patrols and exercises, and it is the flagship of the Northern Fleet. So what will Russia do with these ships now? Well, they're outfitting them to ensure that they're ready for more modern combat. For example, they'll feature state-of-the-art anti-ship weaponry, brand new surface-to-air missile systems, and if that's not enough, they'll be able to take on submarines as well with the new weapons they'll receive. Thus, if they are all outfitted for war and that war comes, they'll be hard to stop. Or at the very least, hard to get the drop on. Due to their nuclear-powered system, they're able to go up to 20 knots in the water and have an unlimited range. So these could be sent to bolster a certain area's defenses, create a line in the sand within the ocean alongside others of its class, or even be sent directly to enemy nations without having to stop. And remember, these are just the older vessels. If you pair them up with the newer ones, that's going to be quite the fleet to deal with. Number 16. The T-90 Battle Tank if you want to see just how far military technology has come over the last 100 years, you need only to look at how tanks have been built and used. At first, tanks could barely do anything on the battlefield because they were such new pieces of technology. But these days, they're one of the backbones of the military, and they can do things that their ancestors would never have dreamed to be able to do. In terms of the Russian tanks that are currently in use, the T-90 battle tank stands as one of their best options to take out foes, even if it doesn't quite go the way that they desire. These tanks were the next evolution in Russia tank design. Following up the T-72 model, they were first developed in the 90s and have since seen extensive action. It's not hard to see why, given how durable that they can be when used properly. This tank features a welded composite armor hull with a built-in Connacht 5 explosive reactive armor block. Oh, and don't forget about the firepower. The T-90 is armed with a fully stabilized 2A46M 125mm smoothbore gun, and the effective range of fire with APF-SDS rounds is about 2,000 to 3,000 meters during the day and up to 2,600 meters at night. Armor penetration comes around 590 to 630 millimeters at 2,000 meters of range. Now, as we've been teasing, these tanks can be effective when used properly. But when Russia decided to invade Ukraine, they were not exactly careful with how they handled the T-90. Not only were the Ukrainian resistance able to take many of these tanks down, they were able to capture them, bring them into their own ranks, and then use them against the Russians themselves. When you're fighting an enemy, you're not supposed to give them your stuff to use against you. Number 15. Prasuka 4 
As warfare evolved, so too did the options that many nations, including Russia, were able to implement on the battlefield to try and stymie what their foes were doing. For example, in warfare, one of the classic things to do is cut off the enemy supply lines so that they're limited in what they can do. In modern warfare, cutting off communications between the soldiers in the field and those at their bases can be vital to causing chaos and leaving their enemies guessing. Enter the Krasuka 4, a vehicle that's designed specifically to take out any form of electronic communication between soldiers and their base camp. But wait, there's more. They can also help to hinder the radar equipment that the enemy may have, which can leave them blind to what your forces have and where they're coming from. Sure, it isn't the most flashy thing on the list, But that's not really the point, because in war, it's not about who has the flashiest toy, or even who can do the most damage with a single shot, it's about using all of your capabilities to the fullest in order to ensure victory. A weapon is useless if you don't know where to aim it, and defenses are pointless if they can't hold back an enemy. Within that line of thought, communications to ask for help or to receive guidance are useless if you can't get the signal to go through, and so, if the Krasuka 4 is on the battlefield for Russia, their enemies better have a backup plan or a countermeasure, or their forces may well be on their own. Number 14. The RS-28 Sarmat when the nickname of your epic missile is the Satan II, then you know that they're trying to make a statement. They're letting you know that the device is evil and that you never want it aimed at you. Rewinding a bit, I'm talking about a missile that is officially the RS-28 Sarmat, but would be nicknamed the Satan II. If it was just a simple missile, it probably would not need the nickname. Instead, I'm talking about an ICBM. You know, an intercontinental ballistic missile, the missiles that are specifically designed to travel super long distances and blow up enemy targets? Well, yeah, it's one of those. What's more, this particular missile was unveiled by Putin himself in 2018. He must have been so proud. And speaking scientifically, it's impressive because Russia now has another type of missile that can travel across the globe to reach whatever target Putin deems worthy of its wrath. There are the missiles that will likely blanket the planet should World War III break out, and that's why many don't want it to happen. Want to know the irony of all all of it? Well, most other superpowers, which includes the United States and the UK, were not actually impressed by this, nor were they willing to say that Russia was more of a danger. Why? Because they already had a massive stockpile of nuclear warheads themselves. But if nothing else, they now have more modern nuclear warheads, and we all have to hope that they aren't put into a position to fire one of these things. Then again, Putin is getting more and more frustrated with the war in Ukraine, and has said that using missiles like these would not be out of the question. And now you can see why so many people don't like him very much. Number 13. The KA-52 Alligator from talking about a single super powerful missile, we'll now go to a vehicle that's known to shoot down super powerful missiles. The Ka-52 Alligator is an all-weather helicopter that's been in use in Russia for quite some time. Like many copters of its kind, the chopper serves many potential purposes and needs, including being an offensive unit in the air. The Ka-52 Helicopter can destroy enemy armored and unarmored ground targets, low-speed aerial targets, and personnel at the front line and in tactical depth. Or, if they need to get more information about an area, they'll use it as a long-range recon scout. Plus, it can act as a commander for a group of attack copters if they need to send a squad of them to a location. But that wouldn't work if it didn't have good firepower. And you would be correct in thinking so. The Alligator can be outfitted with very powerful machine guns and a wide array of missiles. Some of them can even be anti-air missiles so that they can take down other flying craft that wish to shoot at them first. And when you add that to its speed, maneuverability, and radar components, it becomes one tough chopper. Number 12. The Kalanen K-7 
I'm going to start this list with an airplane, but likely not one that you think about, because there's little doubt that Russia has had some incredibly fast and powerful planes in their military arsenal. At one time, other nations were trying to catch up to the capabilities of their MiG jet fighters, but I'm not going to look at their current arsenal, I'm instead going to take a trek into the past. You see, in the 1930s, as the Soviet Union was growing further in power, they wanted to use the still relatively new concept of airplanes to make their military mightier. So, in 1933, a mere three decades after the famous Wright brothers' flight at Kitty Hawk, they made the Kalanin K-7. And much like any other thing that Russia did, they made this thing pretty, pretty big. In fact, this specific airplane is actually the largest one to have ever taken off using propeller engines. As you may imagine, this craft was designed to be a bomber craft. With its huge size, it could carry a large payload to drop on its enemies. However, it did also feature guns that were mounted to it so it could fight in the air, and that was vital even back then where there were smaller planes that were built to shoot down the larger ones. To give you a better picture of just how big this thing was compared to the other nations of the world, at the time, the United States had a bomber known as the Martin B-10. In terms of its wingspan, the Martin was less than half the size of the Kalanin. The problem with that, well, it wasn't the most stable craft in the air. But the fact that Russia was able to make a craft of this size work just 30 years after the airplane had been invented was an impressive and groundbreaking event. And it would not be the first or only time that Russia would push the boundaries of crafts and weaponry. Number 11. The TS-35 Kolitsia 152mm self-propelled howitzer. We'll now go to another type of warfare that's been in use for decades. Bombing the enemy's encampment can be hard to do from the sky unless you do a blanket sweep. And that's why people eventually came up with mortars and howitzers in order to prop up on their side of the battlefield and fire at the opposite side. Today, Russia has a very advanced model to use via this 152mm self-propelled howitzer. Used to replace an aging version of artillery, they were built in 2006 and have much higher capabilities than others of their kind, including being able to fire 16 rounds in a single minute. What's more, it uses two guns to fire those shells, so that helped the version have a longer shelf life and need less maintenance while also ensuring a faster reload time. Eventually, the two-barrel design would be abandoned and a new version was unveiled some years later. It's not clear why the double version was taken down, but despite that, the howitzer is able to be highly mobile and fire all sorts of missiles at the enemy to ensure disruption or damage. The only good thing is that the Russian military currently only has over a dozen of these, and the war in Ukraine has limited their further production. You can call this about with karma, perhaps. Number 10. Novorossiysk Stealth Submarine so far, we've shown you the planes and copters in the air that you can find within Russia, some of their tanks and battleships, and even artillery. But what about under the water? Do they have submarines that people should be very wary of? Well, yes. Yes, they do. And one of them is this one. This is a submarine that has not only advanced stealth technology that's built into it, but an engine that's a mixture of diesel and electric power. It's so good at stealth that it's said to be like a black hole when it comes to radar trying to detect it. Once submerged, you won't know where it is. With its electric engine, it can go about 400 miles on a single charge and travel at around 20 knots. So that makes it fast, far-reaching, and it has an arsenal that can take out rival ships if they get in range. Number 9. The Mi-28 Attack Helicopter well, there's a name that lets you know exactly what they're going for with it. The history of this attack helicopter is not what you may guess, because it was made to be the next great attack helicopter for the Russians, but it had trouble living up to its expectations. For example, it was put up against another model of helicopter and lost in that test, but they were still ordered on the promise of them being improved, and they eventually were. The
They eventually became multiple versions, and other nations aside from Russia were willing to get them to help their own military problems. That included Iraq at one point, so while they never lived up to the hype, they still have their uses, and that makes them dangerous. Number 8. Bora-class hovercraft if I told you that this was a Russian Corvette, you may think that I'm talking about a special car. But in Russia, the term Corvette is meant simply to apply to a small warship, and that's what the Bora-class hovercraft is, albeit with a really unique design. In this case, I'm talking about how it is indeed a hovercraft model of a ship that can glide across the water thanks to an air cushion and propellers. However, unlike many other hovercraft, including ones that are used by the United States, this one is made solely for combat missions on the water. We're actually sad about the number of these hovercrafts in the Russian military because there are only two made. These ships definitely should be in bigger numbers, and Russia has said that they want to make more of them. Could you simply imagine such a fleet of hovercrafts? Number 7. The Yasin-class Submarine when you have a kind of submarine that worries NATO on the regular, well, you are probably doing something right. At least from the perspective of Russia, they're doing something right. The Yasin-class submarine have been in the arsenal of Russia for a long time, and they're submarines with very special guided missiles. This fact alone worried NATO into keeping an eye on them wherever they are. In 2022, when Russia announced that they were going to make more of these submarines, you can bet the nations of NATO were not happy about that. Because aside from being loaded with guided missiles, this class of submarine is very hard to detect in the water, meaning they're the perfect vehicles to send out to strike at enemy targets. And many don't want Russia to get any more powerful than they already are. Number 6. The Buck M3 Missile System have you noticed that Russia really seems to enjoy their various missiles and missile systems? That can't possibly backfire on the rest of the world, right? Well, when it comes to the Buck M3 missile system, we may all need to be a little bit worried. Because, have you ever wondered how a nation would attempt to defend a swarm of missiles from hitting their country? The answer is to blow them up before they get to the target. These counter-missile systems are not always the most reliable, but they are a better safe-than-sorry option that you'll want to have. And for Russia, the Buck M3 missile system is simply that. It's meant to take out missiles or rockets that are aimed at them, while also being able to shoot down planes and drones that are within range. Number 5. Panzer S-1 Another missile system that's used by Russia is the Panzer S-1. It's almost like there's a pattern going on here for how Russia is trying to defend their nation and stop anyone from getting too close. But yes, this is the Panzer S-1, a missile system that is focused on being an anti-aircraft weapon. But this is where the twist comes in, because you won't find this on the battlefield per se. You'll find these in key locations where Russia is housing some of its more important items and personnel. They use this as as more of a defensive system to ensure that missiles don't blast their structures to kingdom come, and they'll even defend other surface-to-air systems so they can keep fighting the good fight. Sometimes you need a weapon to protect a weapon, and Russia has that weapon to do the job. Number 4. Mikoyan MiG-35 and now, at last, we're talking about the MiGs. These are the jet fighters that Russia will unleash without hesitation if they feel that rival nations are trying to take up their airspace, or they simply want to have air superiority over an area. The Mikoyan MiG-35 is the latest model of the plane to have many improvements over the ones that came before. That includes an improved weapon system, engines, electronic detection, and more. In regards to its radar and tracking system, it can look onto targets targets and react to them simultaneously and track them for incredibly long distances. Add to that the various missiles it can have on each wing, and you can see why it'll be putting any foe into a serious dogfight. The only good news? There aren't too many of them in the air, and if the world is lucky, it's going to stay that way. Number 3. P-800 Onyx Anti-Ship Cruise Missile Russia is getting to be a little too much with all of these missiles. How many do you actually need to defend your home? Well, considering how big that Russia is, I guess it should be a lot. 
Plus, this missile has a specific purpose. It's meant to take out ships that are potentially approaching its borders. It's been used in past skirmishes that involve Russia and has been fired on both land and within submarines. Some of these missiles have even been put into their nuclear-powered subs. And that's when things take a turn, because despite the world knowing about these missiles and knowing that they came in certain varieties, we actually don't know too much about them. And that's frightening since they're still in use today. Number 2. Admiral Gorshkov Class Frigate We'll now move on to a new class of ship that the Russians have deployed. The Admiral Gorshkov class frigate was a new type of vessel that was approved by the Russian military back in 2018. Fast forward to these days, and only a handful of them have been produced, with many more in the works. The goal is to have about 30 of them to replace some of the older frigates that are still in their fleet. And what's more, they're not meant to be the focus of the Russian fleet going forward, and for one simple reason. They're multi-role frigates, which means that they can do multiple tasks or missions without needing to be overhauled. So, they can take on enemies above or below the water, go on stealth missions, do recon, escort other vessels, and really, whatever the job requires, this frigate can do. Number 1. The RS-24 Yars do you want to make a guess at what the RS-24 Yars is? If you said it's a missile, well, you would be right. This is yet another in the ICBM line from Russia, and that's still pretty scary. Any missile is scary when you think about it, though. But this is one that can be fired to any point around the world, and it can be launched from multiple kinds of areas. If you want to do it from a moving vehicle, well, you can. Or you can do it from a missile silo for better protection. Seriously, if Russia wished to unleash all of their missiles onto the world, the world would never be the same place as we know it. So let's just be glad that they haven't done that. Anyways, that's all from the cold realms of Russia and the wide variety of weapons that they have in their grasp. Were you surprised by some of these items that Russia has? And which of these things would make you think twice before going up against them? Do you think that there are other things that they are keeping secret from other nations? Please let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.